Salutations, my friends. Today, I want to just have a casual discussion about depression and how you can turn depression into happiness. So first of all, there's so much talk and so much seeking towards curing depression and reversing depression and managing the symptoms of depression or of anxiety or of any other type of, uh, you know, what you call low vibrating energy or negative emotion. And what I have found to be the case, I found this to be true most of the time, is there's so much focusing on reversing depression that you never, you don't really get anywhere. You're constantly, you're constantly finding new ways to treat depression or cure depression or reverse depression. And happiness is like never there. And this is because instead of trying to get rid of depression, you should start working on building happiness. You see, start building positive emotions in general. Okay. I believe everybody has a different uh, idea of what happiness is, but I think the best way to term it is more on the, lungs, the lines of building positive emotions. Positive emotions in every shape and form. You see, um, there are different, uh, different degrees of happiness, uh, basically different degrees of feeling good. Feeling good is, takes many different forms. You could be excited feeling good, happy feeling good, content feeling good calm and relaxed, feeling good, focused and feeling good. You could even be feeling good, uh, angry or sad. A lot of people are, uh, enjoy being sad, enjoy being depressed, or just enjoy feeling down. Um, some people enjoy feeling nostalgic. Uh, and this is actually very, very true. A lot of people probably ask themselves, well, how is that possible? How can somebody enjoy being sad or depressed? It's a bunch of baloney and blah, blah, blah. Um, especially people who are feeling uh, lower vibrating emotions because they tend to be hypercritical, which is why they stay they stay feeling low because it's like a it's like a self feeding cycle of emotion and it's unfortunate. Um, but the best way to break out of this cycle of depression, cycle of negative emotions, this cyber, this damn cycle of hypercritical, hypercritic critiquing, I guess, whatever, um, is to break the mentality entirely and start building positive emotions. So we're not trying to get rid of negative emotions or bad emotions or, you know, emotions we don't want to feel. We're not trying to get rid of anything. We're trying to build positive emotions. It's, it's, it's a completely different way of thinking about things. A lot of people might ask, might ask well, but Wolfgang, um, why, uh, what is the difference? You know, if I'm trying to hear depression, I'll feel a lot happier, right? But you see, combating depression is, is it's like you have a fire and you're trying to kill the fire. Um, that's a bad example, but you're trying to kill the depression and like once the depression's gone, what is there going to be? Um, happiness and positive emotions aren't going to be there unless you build them. Uh, you know, so I mean, you can try killing depression all you want, but eventually you might just end up with boredom. Uh, so instead of trying to kill depression <laughs> and then ending up with boredom and then depression starts again, that's usually where most depression and negative emotions start, believe it or not, most people don't want to admit that to themselves. Or they're just too stuck in depression to see it. They're too blind. Uh, but boredom is where you're going to end up. So, and then it just creates more depression and more negative emotions. It's a never ending cycle if you continue trying to combat loneliness, combat depression, combat negative feelings. Uh, so, you know, as long as, as long as you uh, don't build positive emotions, positive emotions will never be there whether you're depressed or not. So what you want to do is just cut to the chase. You want to cut all the fluff. You want to save all your time and you just want to start building positive emotions instead. I mean, seriously, you're going to have to build happiness and build motivation and build good feelings no matter what, whether you're just bored or depressed, you're anxious, 
whether you're just nothing, you're just listless, you're apathetic, it doesn't really matter. At, there comes a point where you're gonna have to start building those emotions because ultimately that's the goal. Is the goal really like, like man, I'm depressed, just like how do I cure this depression? Like, you think that's the goal, but that's not. That's not what you're looking for. What you're looking for is happiness, okay? And so, um, we're talking about building positive emotions. We're not talking about suppressing negative emotions, you see? Then, and once again, it, it's that distinction again. Combating emotions versus building emotions. You know, you can't fight fire with fire. So, what you want to do is start to dig a moat and build a river of water, I guess. <laughs> uh, so how can we do this? How can we build positive emotions? Uh, I love talking about building positive emotions. And as a matter of fact, I might make a multitude of new videos on this. And I might just keep making new videos on this over and over again. Uh, because I feel like it's so important and I love talking about it and just talking about posit building positive emotions help me feel more of that. Um, and you have to constantly remind yourself of these things, especially when you're coming out of negative emotions. When you're, com when you're in negative emotions, you've gotta, you've gotta like reaffirm positive beliefs and positive thoughts and strategies to feel better. You gotta constantly reaffirm that, constantly remind yourself of, of these things. You gotta refocus yourself because it's all about your focus. So first of all, we have to understand that most depression comes, most depression, and really most negative emotions in general, uh, anger, uh, anxiety. A lot of these come from, and, and this is gonna trigger people. If you're not going on here, this you're gonna, you're gonna like label me as some kind of like un, non-understanding, non-empathetic, uh, crazy person. But I was there, I used to feel like you, and uh, oh well, right? Laziness, 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 okay? I'm sorry, I know it hurts, right? It hurts to take responsibility for your life. It hurts to admit that you're, you might be causing your problem, right? Like, oh, I just want sympathy. I wanna read all these, these blog posts on uh, psychology.com or whatever about how it's not my fault you know, like, like, and shame on those people who tell me it's that it's my fault that I'm creating my own problems, right? Shame on them. Like, damn, I'm so disgusted. <laughs> That's so disgusting. Oh man, I feel so bad for those people who fit, who think this way. The the people who who are just like, oh, I need to be loved. I need to be held. I need, I need, uh, I need, I need sympathy. Like, I need these people to. To tell me it's not my fault, I feel so guilty if I call if I blame myself. Uh, I don't want to blame. Dude, shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh shit, it's crazy. Listen, it's laziness. Think about this. Okay, so here are some specific actions that you can take to combat depression and negative emotions, and and all of these require coming out of laziness. Building, building positive habits. So let's see. Uh, just getting, stop, stop watching porn. First of all, stop watching porn. How many people are so lazy that they create excuses? They're, they're too lazy to quit porn, so they justify it and they try to say, oh, that's crazy talk. Pornography is not bad for you. Jacking off is perfectly fine. It, it prevents prostate cancer and I've got a I've got to bust three nuts a day to prevent prostate cancer and blah blah. Shut up. Pornography is killing your brain cells. Okay, it's been scientifically shown to be more addictive than heroin. It has. Okay. Oh, but blah blah blah. That's not science. But shut up. It is. It is. It is. It is. Study some psychology. Actually research this. You crazy person. Stop watching porn. It's so hard, right? It's so hard. It really is. Okay. Um. I found that after about a week of no porn, the urges really, really, really kick in. But once you pass those urges, it's like every week you get them. And after you, once you get four weeks, the four week mark, it's like, boom, those urges are just horrible. Break through those urges, okay? <laughs> because um, giving into those urges, you could say is kind of like laziness. Right, I know it's an addiction, but I'm just saying it's. Let's just call it laziness because I'm reinforcing that 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 little branch I already embarked upon in this conversation so far. Uh, laziness, uh, 
creates uh, giving into those addictions. And then the more you give into the porn addiction, the more lazy you become. You realize you've wasted hours of your day on porn. How do you expect to be happy if you're wasting your life watching like electronic women on a screen, like having sex with a bunch of dudes and pigs and broomsticks and whatever other crazy fetishes you might be into. And by the way, if, if, if this discussion doesn't make you laugh uh, or if it angers you, if you're triggered by this discussion, um, there you go. <laughs> you're, how are you ever gonna be happy if you can't change your reactions to things, right? Six and stones can break my bones, but words cannot hurt me. But if you're choosing your reaction to my words. So anyway, uh, who cares? <laughs> um, you've got to stop watching porn, okay? That's one thing. That's, that's the, 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 the minimum thing, okay? Pornography. Uh, and that's an ongoing struggle. Relapses are common. Um, it's a hard thing. It, it is a really hardcore addiction, okay? But do your best, okay? Seriously, it, it'll take you years, a lot of times. Uh, you'll go on two, two months with no porn and then go right back to it. Three weeks without uh, porn, go back to it. You might watch porn every day for a couple months and then get snap, it, snap yourself out of it. It's tough. Anyway, stop watching porn. Uh, that's the first thing. What's another one? Um, just getting up early in the morning and going for a walk, uh, especially if the sun is out, okay? Um, vitamin D deficiency is one of the major causes of depression. It's one of the major causes of low testosterone in men, of osteoporosis, um, of, all, of so many different uh, issues that really, really show up once you get in your 30s and 40s, okay? Uh, not to mention the years leading, the, the, the decades leading up to your 40s of vitamin, when you, when you start to develop osteoporosis and, and other forms of uh, vitamin D deficiency, you're gonna, be, you're, you're gonna be feeling depressed most of your life. Because number one, it takes at least 30 minutes out in the sun. Like I'm talking um, at, f at the first week or so, your skin is going to need to adapt. You're gonna probably get burnt up a little bit, especially if you wear sunscreen. Sunscreen's one of the worst things you can wear. If you think sunscreen's good for you, you need to do some more research, okay? Uh, sunscreen blocks vitamin D absorption uh, into your skin from the sunlight. Um, and on top of that, the chemicals in sunscreen actually are carcinogenic and that since they're really preventing your body from utilizing sunlight and vitamin D and just sunlight in general, you're not gonna get the mood boosting benefits from the sun, you're not gonna get the anti-cancer benefits from the sun, you're not gonna get the vitamin D from the sun, so you're wasting your time and your money and you're potentially harming yourself with sunscreen. So don't be stupid. Stop with the sunscreen. Get out in the sun. Uh, and just walk, like really. It doesn't have to be too hot. It doesn't even have to be sun sunny. If you get out and walk um, around your neighborhood, go and walk at a park, especially with trails, go out in nature, um, you will feel so much better. Get some fresh air, uh, 15 to 30 minutes in the morning, okay? The longer you walk, the better you'll feel. Uh, up to about 40 minutes to an hour, then you get bored and you get tired and you're just, you know, unless you really, really wanna do that, most people, they'll be lucky to have the, the, the attention span uh, to walk for 15 minutes without dying of a lack of stimulation. So, but once again, I mean, most people are too lazy to just go out and walk for 15 minutes. And they think like, oh, it's just 15 minutes walking outside. What, how much of an impact can that make on my life? <laughs> uh, well, why don't you go out and do that for about a month, you lazy fuck? And then you'll see, okay? Uh, so that's the second one. The third one, what's the third one? Um, uh, I mean, nutrition, obviously, nutrition. And when I say nutrition, I don't mean like your typical like restrict calories and starve yourself. Fucking retarded, okay? Stay away from people who tell you you need to starve yourself and restrict calories, okay? It doesn't, if you're overweight, you can lose weight without restricting calories. Uh, it's, it has nothing to do with that. What it has to do with is quality nutrition, quality over quantity. 
If you're eating processed foods of any kind, cut that out, okay? People who think like, oh, I can eat a, a donut a day, uh, a Coke a day, blah, blah, blah. As long as you keep that in your diet, you're gonna crave it. But if you go without that food for two, two to four weeks, you won't crave it anymore. So what's the point of keeping it in your diet if you're always going to be craving it? It makes no sense, okay? Like really, who says uh, smoke crack in moderation? <laughs> right, like, oh, you know, if I just smoke crack like once a week, you know, like, um, I can keep myself from going insane and at the same time reap the benefits of crack. Like, um, and, and, and I, won't, I won't harm myself. Like, that's fucking retarded, please. It's the same thing. People are like, oh, it's, it's, it's not. You're over-exaggerating. No, I'm not. It's the same thing. The only reason why you crave donuts and whatnot is because you continue to keep them in your diet. So remove them from your diet and focus on high-quality whole foods like this delicious yerba mate right here. Um, this is Cruz del Monte. Beautiful, delicious yerba mate. Uh, there's about seven tablespoons in here, and uh, this is the second time steeping and brewing this. It looks delicious, it looks green, super fucking delicious. Actually, um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. This is actually goyarki or whatever. Um, I, I have a lot of different types of mate in my cupboard from Brazil and from Argentina, uh, different brands, but. Today I just felt like going back to Goyarki. Uh, just, just well, pff, for this brew actually, I've, I've already had like uh, brewed already like five, five uh, things Yuramonte so far this morning. I love drinking uh, Yuramonte and answering people's comments on my YouTube and making videos. Uh, makes me really, really happy to help people. Uh, so anyway, yeah, Whole Foods, and I mean once again, uh, finding. Well, I'll get to the Uramante, but Whole Foods, right? Most people, they eat junk. Um, they eat, you know, they eat animal, pro what, and, and by the way, I eat a lot of animal products, um, high quality animal products, and I stay away from anything that makes me feel like crap, or anything that I feel like might be harmful to my health. But, but the thing is, most people don't eat enough vegetables, enough fruits. They don't eat, uh, they don't take advantage of all the amazing uh, uh, herbs and spices and superfoods out there, such as cacao, uh, maca root, um, the delicious teas that are available, such as some delicious yerba mate. Uh, this traditional goyaki, by the way, or goyaki, I don't know how to fucking say it. Um, I have I have the traditional and the green version of their year mate. I I have a lot of different mates in my cupboard. I'll have to make a video about that. But um, I mean, your mate is delicious. Uh, you got berries, uh, uh, organic, free range, uh, raw eggs. I know a lot of people are going to be like, "What the hell? Like eating eggs raw is so dangerous for you?" But no, it's not. Not if you drink, if you eat high quality eggs. It's, uh, it's much more healthful to eat them raw uh, than it is to cook. And if you cook the egg, you wanna make sure the yolk is runny, but the egg white is slightly cooked. People think you'll develop a, a biotin deficiency from, white, from, egg, from egg whites. Um, if you only eat the egg white without the yolk, you probably will. <laughs> but if you eat the egg white and the yolk, you can eat it raw uh, and there's so much biotin in the yolk that it really negates any negative effects you'll get from the egg white. And I honestly feel like um, people create, I feel like the government creates these regulations on eggs or these, uh, these false scare, scares on, on eating raw eggs. I feel like it's because they're so helpful to the body that they want to scare people. They want to make them think they're gonna get salmonella. Even though I've been eating raw eggs for years, every single day, um, and I haven't gotten some manola, and many other people have done the same thing. Uh, I don't have any cholesterol problems, any of that. As a matter of fact, there's a whole body of evidence that shows that cooking the eggs actually cause the cholesterol to become uh, oxidized, which can be dangerous and cause the negative effects people associate with cholesterol problems. So, you know, undenatured protein, which by the way, I know if it's raw eggs, 
you're not going to be able to, it's not as bioavailable as if you cook them. But anyway, uh, let's let's continue on the discussion, okay? I should make a whole other video on raw eggs if people actually are that damn concerned about it, thinking I'm I'm crazy because of it, which is retarded. I hate, I hate that. I'm so, man. But, um, yeah, I mean, yerba mate. Like, if you're not drinking yerba mate and you're, like, all crying and whatnot, I mean, drink yerba mate. It will really change your life. Uh, you know, seven tablespoons or whatever. I mean, the thing is, yerba mate, it seems like the more, the more I drink, the more relaxed I become. I feel like it's a relaxing, focusing, calming, happy feeling type beverage rather than like coffee, which most people think cracks them up and makes them stimulated. Your mate doesn't do that, all right? Uh, unless you have a placebo effect and you're like a um, hypochondriac like I used to be. It can be very easy to feel jittery when you believe something's gonna make you feel that way, but I think it'll be hard to do that with mate because it's just so relaxing. Uh, but anyway, I mean, really, you know, most people are too lazy to change their diet. They, it's crazy, absolutely crazy. And the craziest thing is because they're too lazy to change their diet, they're too lazy to stop watching porn, too lazy to go out and go for a simple walk in the sun. Um, they never do these things. And just, just going out for a walk uh, in the sun for 15 minutes a day, it will make you less lazy. It will motivate you. Um, going, uh, changing your nutrition will give you your body the nutrients it needs to have the willpower to change other lazy habits. So you're too lazy to change your habits and changing your habits will make you less lazy. So it's like a, a cycle of laziness. People are too lazy to stop masturbating, but if they stop masturbating, they'd, be, they'd stop being lazy. It would, re, it would make them more motivated and less likely to, to be lazy in the future. So, <laughs> crazy. I mean, really, if you just force yourself to change your habits at first, um, your laziness will kind of go away as a result and it will be just be super easy. But most people, they, they can't see how much greener life is on the other side because they never actually just embark on this journey. They never actually just change their habits and they never go on proper nutrition. They never stop masturbating. They never exercise uh, or go out in the sun. And then they're always like, oh, it's not gonna make a difference. Oh, like, uh, I just love food so much. I just I just don't have time. It's like, man, if you just saw how, how much greater life can be uh, doing these simple things I'm talking about, then it wouldn't really, you know, man, you, you would look back at, at all these dumb excuses you're giving yourself and you'd be like, you'd feel stupid. I'm sorry, but you would. Uh, I mean, at least that's how I felt uh, anytime I made stupid excuses and then realized how stupid I was later. I like finding out that I'm stupid because I don't care about like, well, I don't want to blame myself. I, I'm too scared to call myself stupid. Like, I don't care about that shit. What I care about is living the best life I can live. So, um, you know, I want to find you know, things I'm doing right now that I shouldn't be doing, right? I wanna find things that are that are hindering my progress. I wanna find out what's making me feel low. I, I wanna get rid of those bad things because I wanna feel great. But most people, instead of eliminating bad uh, habits and building positive habits, what they do is they they feel bad about their bad habits and they try so hard to justify them. They try so hard to feel comfortable with their bad habits. And they never change their bad habits because they're so like, oh, like, you know, they just want to feel comfortable. And like they're just stuck. And their life, their life is always like this, this haze of resistance where it's like they always talk about changes they want to make, but they always make excuses as to why they can't make these changes. And they always surround themselves with people who accept them for who they are and make them feel good about like their comfort. And they make their life so comfortable, um, comfortably, you know, comfortable around their bad habits, they never change. And it's like a haze of, of like negative emotions on the inside that they're just trying to cover up. 
So their life is fake. It's like, oh, they, they, you know, you know, as an outside observer looking in, you, you can see that these people are not happy. <laughs> and they're always like trying to put on a fake smile, but behind the scenes, they crack. They crack under pressure so easily. And it's because they're always trying to stay comfortable. They're trying to, to try to find all these excuses and all these ways to feel comfortable with their bad habits. And if they would just start to admit to themselves, like, hey, um, I don't have an, a successful YouTube channel because I never make videos. Or, you know, if I just started making videos, I, I developed that success after a couple years. Too lazy though, right? Don't have the time. Um, or like, uh, Tam, you know, like, I always talk about how I should exercise, but uh, I never make that effort. Uh, God damn, I'm so pathetic. Uh, feel sad, feel sad, feel, hate yourself for a while, and then just start to realize how fucking retarded you are, and that, that feeling of like, damn, like, I'm, I'm such a loser, I'm so pathetic. I mean, I know it sounds kind of harsh, you don't have to do this, but that should motivate you, because the pain of not doing it is greater than the the actual effort of doing it. So then you go out and you start exercising your life changes, right? Um, or like masturbation, it's like always masturbating, complaining about why like, you know, girls don't like you or you can't get a girlfriend or whatever it might be. And, or, or like, oh, like, you know, um, whatever. Uh, I, or you're lonely or you don't have time to exercise but you have three hours to watch pornography like you know or you're you're an insomniac because you have dopamine imbalance from uh, pornography it, it it's actually actually happens okay it happened to me um, and uh, it's like if you just change your habits you just make the, you, you know what's what's causing your problems you just don't want to admit it just do it. It's like, just do it. Do it. Do it. I like that guy on YouTube, goddammit. Do it, fucker. Like Nike, just do it. It really is that simple. It, it actually is very, very, very simple. Um, I hesitate to say it's simple because if you haven't done it yet, it's, it's like, oh, the, easy for you to say. Like, Shut up. The only reason why it's not simple for you is because you're just not doing it. If you, it's as simple as literally just taking action, but you're never going, like you'll spend five years waiting around till you feel like doing something. And hopefully by that time, like, like for me, you'll realize, uh, shit, I spent five years waiting to feel like doing it. And I never ended up feeling the inspiration to do it. Maybe waiting for inspiration is not the best approach. I mean, really, for me, Abraham Hicks and the Law of Attraction stuff I used to really, really be into, um, telling me to just, like, wait around until I felt the energy or whatever, I feel like that really hindered me. What I realized is you got to cultivate that energy. <laughs> you got to build that energy, just like just like the Chinese and Chinese medicine, building the chi, doing Tai Chi and Qi Gong and all these things. Uh, you know, building the energy, cultivating the energy. All right, building positive emotions is what it's all about. Um, so I discussed three main ways, you know, there's nutrition and stopping masturbating and going out in the sun, hitting the gym, obviously, just don't even worry too much about exercise programs at first, but just uh, make sure that you leave your phone in the car or you just have it on airplane mode to listen, just listen to music. Don't get on Facebook or anything like that, okay? <laughs> Facebook and social media is another reason why people are depressed because they don't realize how addicted they are. They just mindlessly open their Facebook app without even realizing it. Next thing you know, they're scrolling through their Facebook news feed and they're not controlling their actions. It's autopilot. Uh, when you're at the gym, you want to just start exercising. It helps to have a good program. I mean, you're not going to really see a whole lot of progress until you actually get on a program. But if your goal is just to feel good and change your habits, just go to the gym every day and you'll start to go to the gym every day. All right. It really is a matter of um, neurons that fire together, wire together. So start firing the neurons, firing those neural pathways of going to the gym. The more you go to the gym, the more you'll want to go to the gym.
and it just become natural to you. Uh, so what's another thing? Uh, waking up early, right? Uh, changing your circadian rhythms. If you're the type of person that cannot sleep at nighttime, pull an all-nighter. Do not sleep at nighttime, and then make and then wait to go to bed until 8 p.m. or whatever. If you can do this, depending on your job, this might not be possible. What I notice is trying to force yourself to sleep is the worst thing you can do. If you are always uh, like if you were laying in bed for hours, you know, just like man, I wish I could sleep. Like you're killing yourself. Do you know how much positive emotions you'd be could? cultivating during that time instead of try, laying in bed trying to go to sleep feeling frustrated for three hours get up uh, record a video write write in a journal read a badass book don't do some mindless shit like YouTube don't do mindless shit don't watch videos don't watch Netflix don't watch porn uh, read some inspiring books uh, do some exercise do some push-ups or something seriously um, practice martial arts or something, learn a new skill. Those three hours where you think like, oh, I should be sleeping because the mainstream like uh, advice is sleeping eight hours a day and I'm only gonna get four. Or like go to bed before t midnight. Like shut up with all that bullshit. Who cares? You don't, you shouldn't be focused on what I should like, like what should I do? Like because it's supposed to be healthy. What is supposed to be healthy? Focus on like, what is going on right now? Not what is supposed to going on. I, I, I'm supposed to be sleeping right now at 3 a.m. Shut up. <laughs> Doesn't matter if you're supposed to be sleeping. What matters is you can't sleep. So what can you do? You can play some video games. It, that's so much better than just laying in bed being frustrated. Build those positive emotions. So I mean, this video is already about 30 minutes. I could go on and on. But uh, post down in the comments section uh, what what are some of the things in this video that I mentioned that stuck out to you? Uh, go ahead and um, you know ask me questions or comments, anything like that. I'm so happy to reply. Um, any requests, any anything like that, let me know down in the comments section. Uh, drink some good mate. Uh, eat whole foods. Don't worry about veganism, paleo. Who cares? Seriously. Just eat whole foods and re remove processed sugar. Remove uh, added sugar, processed sugar, isolated sugar of all kinds, no matter what diet you're following. Remove hydrogenated oils, remove gluten, remove uh, processed flour. Um, you know, jasmine rice, white rice is fine. Um, you know, remove foods you're intolerant to and just eat whole foods, seriously. Eat whole foods, focus on quality and just do what feels good to you. Okay, stop focusing on what's supposed to, what am I supposed to be doing? And start focusing on what do you want to do? What's going to make you feel good? What's going to give you the most bang for your buck? Live your damn life, man. Stop like focusing on all this, this mental masturbation. Like, oh, like, you know, this, this monk, like he, he only eats one meal a day and a thousand calories a day. And he's a raw vegan. He's super fucking muscular. That Dr. Amon Ra. Do you realize, like, people are so gullible. I, I actually believed it at first. <laughs> Honestly, I, I did, and then I, and I, I thought critically for a moment, like, damn, this, the, even, there's no way this can be. This guy looks like he's on steroids, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, be careful, man, come on. Be careful. There, there's some very obvious things that cause most people's depression, just like there's very obvious things that cause most people's disease, okay? Uh, most of these studies that, that show uh, animal products are bad for you and this and that, they, they're literally including the standard American diet as a part of this animal-based diet. There are some studies that include health-conscious meat eaters and uh, this and that, and low carbers and this and that. There are some, but the vast majority of studies that are reputable, that, that really are convincing and that are well put together. They're using people who eat the standard American diet with meat and they're comparing them to vegans, okay? Anybody with any common sense knows if you eat, if you eat processed sugar, hydrogenated oils, you eat dairy, especially pro uh, processed dairy products, um, 
if you're eating a standard American diet, you're gonna feel like crap no matter what. And you compare that to vegan or paleo, the vegan and the paleo people are gonna feel better. Uh, and if you are vegan and you see veganism as the best diet in the, on the planet, which is fine, I was there and I think at certain points in time, I mean, I'm, I'm probably gonna go raw vegan uh, for a couple weeks here and a couple months actually for spring, but um, I'm totally not against it by the way, I'm not. But I'm just saying, you think that's the best thing in the world. What are you comparing it to though? People are like, oh, when I switched to veganism, I felt great. But where were you coming from? Were you coming from uh, the standard American diet or like, you know, just say a mainstream healthy diet, right? With all the food groups or were you coming from a paleo diet or were you coming from Mediterranean or, um, you know, were you paleo? Were you keto? I mean, I mean, there's, there's a lot of variances and I believe that coming from a paleo diet, you can feel amazing on vegan. But I also believe that most people go from being standard American diet to veganism because veganism's gotten so popular now. Everyone's heard about it, everyone's seeing about it, and everyone's changing over because of ethics or because they've, they've just been uh, inspired by these activists or these vegan gurus, which is great, amazing. Anything that's gonna get you into being health conscious and aware of what you're putting in your body is absolutely wonderful. Not to mention if you're doing veganism, veganism properly, you're going to be consuming uh, at least 30 times more antioxidants and uh, polyphenols and vitamins and minerals than the average person or even paleo people because most paleo people don't care about uh, those types of things and veganism by definition you're consuming fruits and vegetables unless of course you're one of those people who eat a bunch of Oreos and shit uh, all I'm saying is um, it is health significant. Any any health conscious diet is significantly healthier than standard American diet, um, and veganism is super high in nutrition and it's super low in oxidative stress. Okay, uh, foods that cause oxidative stress, uh, meat and saturated fat included, right? So you're minimizing damage, maximizing nutrition. So you know, anyone who knows my philosophy on nutrition knows that that's empirical that's the most important thing but uh, over time a lot of people start to feel worse and worse and some people have intolerances they're not aware of like I did and you know yada yada so anyway come on it's it's not that hard just eat healthy just go out and exercise get some sun take a vitamin D supplement if there's no sun where you're at drink some yerba mate eat whole foods stop masturbating uh, and be productive, really. I mean, that's a whole nother thing I should have mentioned already is, of course, you're gonna be depressed if you're inside your house all day or if you're watching television so much, if you don't have any meaning in your life, don't have any purpose, if you lack passion, if you're thinking self-defeating thoughts, okay? Of course, you're gonna be depressed. Leave a comment and questions down below and I'll talk to you soon.